Well, hello everybody. Welcome back down into the dungeon for kind of a quick look at some of the gardens. Um, not really a lot to update as far as plant growth, but uh, I've got some plant death I figure we can take a look at. Well, we just kind of, uh, well, chat about what's coming in the season ahead. So, hopefully you'll want to stick around and uh, see where this goes. I'm a little curious. Let's find out. So here we've got that big green tote that I've basically been putting all of the dirts and such from everything that's died into because I don't want to be reusing it. But here we have what's left of this poor sage plant. Didn't make it. Actually, I think I might take some of those nice dried leaves off of there. But the rest of that can just pretty much go in the compost. I'm curious though to see what the root ball looks like. Because I believe I planted this into here. Oh, I'm gonna say early spring. So it's had almost a full year of being in there. Came out more or less easy enough. Bash it around a little bit, but not quite sure why this died off. I was trying to be pretty well behaved. I don't know how well it's showing up in the camera, but looking at it here, I can clearly see that the roots went all the way out to the edge and then just kind of stopped there. Did fairly well, but this is a tragic plant to have lost. Lots of potting soil in here. This stuff's all gonna get dumped into uh, I don't know, probably the garden by the chicken coop. I'm going to grow them some shard and kale and stuff in there. I figure if those little white moths go for it there, maybe the chickens will get a few of them. That is pretty decent root mass though. I mean, I'm not getting a lot of space that uh, was just soil here. I, I have to say I am, I am impressed. Clearly going to take me a little longer to get this out than I had thought, but such is life. Not immediately reusing my soils is, I think, the hardest thing for me this winter because I always want to, you know, plant things up and plant things on. But a lot of folks have suggested that's kind of where my aphid problem is coming from. We'll see. Anyway. Not bad. Definitely going to move that into the uh, worm compost bin and grab another one of the plants here that is no longer with us. So tragically the rosemary bit the biscuit too. This has been dead for a little bit longer. But again, I'm quite curious to see... Oh, look at that, eh? Some serious discoloration on the side. I don't know if that's the mold I was warned about or if that's uh, maybe nutrients leaching out or what. But either way... Not necessarily cool to see. Let's see if we can just dump this puppy out. Woo, there's a lot of perlite in that. Apparently this was planted during my perlite phase. Should be nice to be able to have in the garden, right? But clearly it didn't do this plant any good. Sure smells nice and strongly of rosemary though. I'm going to say this needs to be washed before I'm planting anything else in it and uh, thoroughly beaten get the last of that soil out but I'll take care of that a little bit later on I got a few of those planters so I'll just give them all a good washing maybe a little bleach wouldn't hurt some hydrogen peroxide perhaps but let's scrape this off and see how its roots are doing right away I'm gonna say it didn't seem to be uh, as extended as they were on the sage but it's still not bad. This is, or was, I guess I should say, about two years old when it finally died. Give or take. The smell of rosemary that's still coming from these roots, though, is pretty intense. Holy perlite, though. Wowzers. So, yeah, this time... 
we had some discoloration on the bag and the roots did not grow all the way out to the edge by any means I mean this might have been a much much happier plant if they did but here we can see the original hopefully you can see that the original planting and then this is the roots that grew out from it so it did alright just not fantastic handy little planters though I just think they're better if uh, somebody has a drip irrigation system or whatever like the way Charles P set up his with the um, the irrigation system like I was saying it's fine these guys unfortunately got dried out anytime I would uh, you know miss a midday watering or whatever so yeah maybe could have done better still a nice little root system I'm sure whatever worms are left in that uh, worm bin I have down here will be happy to have this and like I say it now smells delightfully like rosemary down here Another plant that is sadly no longer with us is the Sand Dollar from 2016. You did well, my little friend. But the end came quite suddenly for this plant. Not quite sure, you know, what happened. The soil is still a little bit moist. And I was trying to give it nutrients, but, you know, sooner or later, it's going to pass. This is one of those so-called self-watering pots. It's got the little strip in there reservoir down here somewhere overflows when you know necessary not as happy as those with those planters as I would have thought either and it looks like the plants have a lot more room to grow in there than they actually do if you think about the size of this plant like in some of the earlier videos it's, it's things taller than I am and it was in that same planter I would have expected a whole lot more root mass and if this is the root mass this was, that was supporting that thing I mean then good heavens that explains why it just couldn't do it why it never really put out the fruit anything like that that is a shame because I mean look at the the trunk like, there's my thumb not a small thumb there's the trunk of that pepper plant you know, so some folks have asked me, is, is that true? Can you ever get a plant like that? And it's like, yeah, well, if you grow it for a few years, then it's definitely a possibility. That's too bad. I really enjoyed these peppers. But uh, I think this year, I'm kind of getting away from the focus on the peppers so much. And I want to move... 10 points. I want to move into just kind of general production. There's those tomatoes. They didn't quite make it either. Nice soil in that though. Kind of looks very worm casting-ish. I'm hoping that means I've got good biology in the soil. Because like I'm saying, I want to move away from the, the peppers because it's all about peppers, right? But I want to get into production. I'd like to have so much growing that we can't possibly save it all or use it all. We have a lot of space, so I don't think it's necessarily unreasonable, which is kind of why the tomato grove this year is turning into um, sort of a Three Sisters experimental grove. And uh, like I said in a previous video, Three Sisters is going at it lightly. I intend to mix a lot more varieties of plants into that. Um, you know, it shouldn't be that hard to grow 100 pounds of food with uh, you know a half acre plot or I mean it's a quarter acre of garden so I mean really I've got no excuse to have not hit my goal last year other than overall incompetence and so this year I'm trying to put a lot of uh, research into things and I'm you know it looks beautiful doesn't it um, and I'm learning about mycorrhizal fungi which I probably mispronounced but they're fascinating things to have in your soil and kind of a must according to uh, like the grasslands research that I'm doing and you know all the bacteria and stuff you know much like our gut need them apparently our soil have their own set of needs there and that's where the worm castings come in so handy I guess because they're just ripping full of that good bacteria so there's all of that and I'm trying to basically try and figure out how I can you know um, increase the, the positive bacteria in my soil and instead of 
treating the symptoms of things in my garden, I need to find the cause and I need to deal with that, you know, like, is my soil deficient? I don't think it is, you know, from all this prairie research that I'm doing and like I say, the grasslands and pasture lands and stuff, I, I can break my soil and I look at it and go, yeah, okay, maybe there's a lot of compaction, it's hard for water to get through this, but where it is, you know, thick black soil, it looks like worm castings. I mean, this is a bad example where some... That looks more like the classic Manitoba mud there, but... Like, out in the garden, it looks... It looks like it's good, healthy soil, so... I think it's communicating the nutrients to the plants that is the issue. So I think it is, yeah, I need to get... I need to up the bacterial cultures or counts or whatever they are in my garden. And I need to... I don't know, does anybody actually have any experience with that whole mycorrhizal fungi thing? Because I think I kind of need to get that well established in there too. Huh, I thought I had more plants to deal with. I kind of think I need to get the those established in there too. Because from what I'm hearing, it's kind of like... They'll go to one plant and go, oh, you've got too much of this. We'll take it over to this one here. And it's, it sounds really silly to talk about... Um, the plants communicating but that's exactly what they're doing from from what I'm, I'm learning so it would be uh, great to get maximum growth out of these plants because the last few years here have been educational but not as productive as I might like oh I can't help but play with this it's just uh, I want to plant in it but everything that's you know it's all dead. As one viewer once told me, is I don't have soil, I have dirt. So, I mean, that might be it too, because the difference seems to be uh, active cultures in there. But we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be an interesting garden year. It certainly is. It certainly is. You know, it's a shame just how many of these plants have passed away, but... This mouse melon, still just killing me. Started off with 22 pepper plants that I tried bringing in this year, and looking down now, I see a whopping five survivors. But that's how it goes in my dungeon. That's kind of why I refer to it as the Darwin Dungeon and the Darwin Gardens and all that stuff, because it's all about survival of the fittest down here. This El Oro de Ecuador seems to be doing a little bit better since I've hacked it back. But at the same time... Eh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to make it or not. That MOA Scotch Bonnet, this thing has just struggled, and yet it survives. Yellow Scorpion from 2017. I, I just don't get it with this plant. Nice looking dandelions, though. Get rid of those. The Sugar Rush Red. I'm not even sure this guy's going to be with us next week. I'm not even sure it's with us right now. But we'll see. We'll see. That would make this the, uh, the Sugar Rush Cream. Which does, so far, seem to be hanging on. Just barely, but hanging on. It's going to be interesting. That's why uh, I was saying in a previous video, too, I want to kind of focus on an indoor garden and an outdoor garden this year and things that uh, I want to keep indoors I will just keep indoors they're never gonna go outside and hopefully they'll be content to grow with the indoor light because you think looking around that it's bright enough in here but once you compare it to natural sunlight it just doesn't do it so as far as next year's peppers go I'm having some mixed results a lot of things are doing alright but uh, with these little tiny cups, when I haven't quite watered in time, some of those deaths are pretty quick and tragic. These kale are doing just fantastic since I've moved them under these pipe LED strips, though. It's going to be interesting. Like I say, I've got to pick and choose what's going to go outside when the time comes, what's going to stay inside full time. But for now, these things seem to be doing all right. We hop up here. I think this is the biggest success story of the winter garden this year is this little DWC tote. I'm really glad I put the water uh, or the air pump in there. Thanks again for that suggestion. 
because it has made all the difference in the world. When I've attempted to crack key things, i.e. no air in there, everything dies. I never did paint the edge of this, but you can't really see the roots, so hopefully they're not getting too much light damage. Let's pull one of these up so you can kind of see. This is uh, one of the garden salsas. It's got um, some pretty decent roots going on there, you know? And that's just an air hose. It doesn't even have an air stone in it. This is one of the random compost peppers. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. I have got to find out what's going on with this deficiency. But I have the, uh, the chart up on my computer right now. I just didn't actually check it before I started filming this video. But look at that. Fantastic. So i got to be careful I don't crush the roots putting them back in there. But there are quite a few of these earlier varieties that I've got in here. I think there's two Naga Vipers in here from Punky and I got one of the Kales that I'm trying in here. But I am still thinking very strongly about converting the other tote that I have like this. Uh, I'm going to order some more airline and a couple more stones so I can use that pump that I was sent. And hopefully we'll have these side by side and the plants can, well, just show me what they've got. Right now I have, what is it, some of the micro, oh, flora micro and flora bloom mixed in there. Not to any uh, kind of precision, just literally a couple drops, a couple drops, darkened up the water. My plan is to kind of leave it as long as I can see some pink in there. I'm not going to add any more nutrients, but as soon as the color seems to be gone, then I'll go at it. Because I still have the issue with, I don't want to dump the water out and start fresh. I mean, it's not a lot of water, but I don't want to be wasting the water and I don't want to be wasting the nutrients, you know? So, yeah. Basically, though, this is definitely this year's shining star. Another one of those random peppers. The sunflower seed in the peat moss when I transplanted that one, so got some combo gardening on there, but going on there, but doing all right. A few aphids need to be shaken off, but that's life around here. They're not he fantasy. Look at that little aphid collection. All right, let's put you on the tripod and go feed the fish. Turn that funky uh, grow light off so you can actually kind of see the fish in their proper colors while I do this. I have to say though. Paintbrush of Doom is by far the best way to get rid of aphids that I have ever encountered. And the fish have definitely learned that when I sit down here with the paintbrush and the plants, it's worth getting around. Unfortunately, most of these are probably landing on the mint right now. But... Looking at the water, it's almost like dandruff on there. I can take the shit to the plant and just shake the buggers out of it. And that gets rid of a lot of them. But taking a little time to paint the underside along the stems and where all the leaves join in particular gets rid of tons of these little buggers. It's uh, really impressive. I have to say this Ahi Fantasy is doing a lot better since I trimmed it out a little bit too. I don't know if you can really see, but this I took a whole bunch out of the center there. It's hopefully, okay, up with that. The whole center stem there, clipped that out and tried to send it off in three different directions. It looks like it still kind of needs to be cut some more, but for now anyway. Sit back a bit and Watch the fish enjoy the snack. They just hoover them suckers right up too. So it's never gonna entirely remove the aphid situation, but I've just kinda come to grips with that, you know. Stuck dealing with them. They might as well be a snack for the fish. Give you a moment with them while I find another plant.
I'm amazed how well these fish are doing. So here I've got the one that's uh, grown with the sunflower. Cute little weird companion planting going on there. Not a lot of aphids on this, but I figure I'll take the second to brush them off anyway because it's better to get them while there's only a few. Because a few can easily turn into a few million overnight. Now I don't I don't know if those numbers are accurate, but it certainly feels like they're accurate, you know? Anybody who's ever had an infestation that just showed up overnight, you know what I'm talking about. Occasionally I do knock bits of soil in there, but not a big deal. Just pull it out, toss it into the compost bucket. Yeah. Whoop. I find I go over these plants like three and four times, and I still find more aphids to brush off every time I do. But like I say, every one or two that go into the fish tank, I mean, that's saving so many generations of aphids from damaging my plants. I kind of chuckled the first time this was suggested, taking a paintbrush and taking the time to get rid of them all that way, but since I've been doing it, noticeable difference. I almost need my reading glasses on when I'm doing this though, because sometimes these little buggers are hard to see. Alright, slightly happier plant. These little tiny ones in the mini party cups very easy to clean makes all the difference in the world but I mean okay here's a garden salsa so obviously this was planted at the same time as the garden salsa in the DWC doesn't have much of a root system coming out of the bottom in fact I don't see any roots coming out of the bottom on this I've been uh, regularly cleaning them all for aphids, but that one in the bubbling tote has done significantly better than any of the others in these mini double cups. I've lost quite a few of the garden salsa peppers actually, which is kind of tragic because they are a nice variety. They're not super hot or anything, but they do grow well here in our very short Manitoba season. And I have to say, I put them about on par with the jalapeno. So nothing scary, but still. Well, here we got one of the Batman's Hell's Bells. Cute little guy. But it's got an infestation on it, so we'll clean it up today while we're at it. So it seems to me the ladybugs kind of start randomly appearing upstairs in February or March. So that'll be nice, but uh, I don't think I'm going to have anywhere near as much to feed them this year. Because the fish are doing a pretty good job wiping these puppies out. Another one of the little Batman's Hell's Bells. Brush a few off of there. Every few brushes, flick the paintbrush. Just in case they're trying to hang on. So I don't need to be passing them to other plants. We've got one of the random compost peppers. I ended up transplanting this into a larger double cup system. 
Not a lot of aphids on here, but uh, I was just noticing. Let's see if we can get a good camera angle on that. It looks like the top has started to split. So I wouldn't be surprised if this thing tries to put on flowers for me soon. I'm not sure I'm going to let it. But at the same time, why not? Maybe this would become one of the full-time basement peppers. Came from the compost in the basement, so... Almost feels like that's the appropriate way to go. And after all, if I don't like the pepper, I can always uh, snip it. <laughs> fascinating some of the nicest peppers this year I have no idea what they are but it's only January so I've got lots of time to plant more peppers that I do know what they are definitely should have brought my reading glasses though is that reaper from last year again I did uh, some pretty serious cutting on this. I took all of the flower buds off that I could find at the time. Still haven't figured out what its deal is. I think it's deficient in a few different things to be perfectly honest. But I figure as long as I keep painting off the aphids and keep this sucker alive might yet someday get a reaper out of it. Since the uh, not fertilizing hasn't really eliminated my aphid situation, I'm just going to make the assumption that I'm I'm safe to use fertilizers. And if the aphids, you know, move in in mass, well then I'll just have more to wipe off because this seems to be working. But I don't want the plants suffering while I experiment anymore because oh, I'm just tired of bad crop numbers. So, let's uh, try and push production. Top of this plant doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look great either. I think when these side leaves get a little bit larger, a couple weeks maybe, then I'll take off these dead ones. Hopefully that will uh, help. I mean, they're not dead, so I haven't. That's why I haven't taken them off yet. But they're not um, thriving, are they? That was our liquid. A little bit of roots coming out there. Not much. Not much. Put a little fish water in there for now. Off to the side. Looking at that last tray of seeds that I put down. So far, the big chocolate Batman's are the only thing coming up. And that one there is not liking life without the humidome on there. Such is life. It's, um, it's a nice variety of peppers or seeds that I had in there, but so many of them were kind of old and kind of questionable. I can't be too surprised. And I do have a lot of newer seeds that I've been sent, so I think when I get back to planting peppers, I will uh, probably go with more of the packaged seeds. I, I can't commit to anything at this point. But it would be nice to, you know, plant 72 cells and get 72 plants as compared to right now it's looking like two. So, yeah, yeah. Realistically, though, I've got five and a half, yeah, about five and a half months before uh, I can plant anything outside. So, I don't think I'm going to rush into planting another batch of peppers anytime soon. I'll give those guys, I don't know, another month or so. Maybe. We'll see. And, uh, you know, if they haven't done anything for me by then, well, I'll dump them out and maybe consider a new batch. But for now, I'm doing a lot of research, like I was saying, on uh, grasslands and pasture lands and how to build bacterial con or colonies in your soil and how to, uh, you know, get mycorrhizal fungi going. Because right now it looks like I can buy some to sprinkle in your garden or put on your the roots when you transplant your plants and they'll grow from there. But as with so many gardening things, it's... Um, it feels like it's overpriced and there's got to be a more natural way to go about it. So 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what, what comes with next year's garden because I've got the chickens helping me with composting some stuff and I've got all that uh, indoor soil that's going to be dumped out into the various beds and yeah. I'm excited for next year's garden because I've got a lot of big plans and big ideas, right? But it's I think it's taking a dramatic change from the normal pepper garden with stuff and I think it's going to be a proper garden with peppers. As weird as that feels. Anyway, yeah, you're just gonna have to stick around and uh, see how it plays out, you know, just kind of like I do. <laughs> uh, I wish I was one of those people that could make solid plans, but I'm just not. However, pretty sure I'll see you guys in the coming weeks. Be sure to uh, check the various channels. You never know where I'm going to pop my head up during these winter months because there's really not a lot of gardening that I can do. So if you're interested and you want to hang out, yeah, you want to make sure you're subbed to all of those other ones too. Until next time, everybody, I am going to wrap it up. I have a hot chocolate calling my name. I'm going to go find it.